can i am i audible yes 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 okay fine so i'm that, taking just half good. a minute extra sure just half a minute uh -huh. extra because uh, okay. i can see yeah, the yeah. screen dr okay, sd okay. ganguly okay yes. okay please start thank you <laughs> uh, uh, dr ganguly because i have done my uh, medicine house trustee under him in rg kor thank you i am proud yes sir thank you sir so uh, awake ekmo because uh, this presentation has been asked by dr bondobadhai to give uh, uh, this because ekmo is uh, probably uh, the uh, it's a need of the hour for uh, this covid patients who are not um, uh, doing well on the ventilator you know, all of us are eagerly waiting for your awake ekmo session because see regarding ekmo we have very little so many of us so please present it obviously this is a very uh, uh, very much need of the hour because uh, all the uh, this covid patients were not doing well on ventilators and they are not getting oxygenated they are going to ecmo uh, uh, very frequently with um, uh, uh, the availability of ecmo machines and all these things though very meager but at least in this part of the country uh, uh, from the first wave of the pandemic it has been proved that ecmo is giving life to uh, uh, at least those people who are not supposed to see the next day sun when their oxygen saturation is going down below 70% below 60% below 50% with the 100% oxygen and even on prone uh, ventilation so with this thing uh, because awake ecmo uh, uh, is a uh, the need of the hour because as any uh, uh, patients on ecmo we thought they are so ill they cannot be kept awake they they are uh, kind of uh, sedated you can't make them awake actually this is not the thing and i want to share some uh, uh, this videos for that and obviously i have no financial interest but only i am interested in uh, awareness about the ecmo because uh, uh, this ecmo awareness will uh, lead to the early referrals before any multi organ failure develop in case of severe pneumonia and where the ecmo actually plays the good role where it can be reverted back so this is a newspaper cutting from the last uh, year which showed uh, 43% of our covid-19 deaths is actually happened in between 30 to 59 years of age a look at the age group it is only the bread earning members of the family who have died and the 43% so we could not prevent that death and uh, there is a huge financial impact to that family who has lost uh, uh, those their members when they are with the little children or wife with the an ailing parents with the, that age group of 30 to 59 years of age so we have to put uh, uh, ecmo in a um, uh, on a regular practice to prevent this kind of acute catastrophic hypoxic deaths patient cannot die of lack of oxygen in this 2021 that is our motto and oxygen delivery has to be there even if the lung is not working through ecmo so this is our motto patient can die later on because of cytokine storm because of acidobacter but patient should not die of lack of oxygen that is my uh, motto so we kept the patients awake even on ecmo when it is probably this venovenous ecmo which is com very commonly used 99% of the ecmo used in venovenous ecmo in uh, respiratory uh, illnesses like in covid patients when we don't want to ventilate because lungs are going to get burst because they are like a brick now from a balloon kind of structures and if you put if you uh, bang them with the ventilators they are going to burst so you have to prevent pneumothorax pneumomedial stenosis all the early syndrome so you get rid of ventilation you put them on ecmo second thing keep keeping them awake always they are go for a very good neuromuscular recovery the problem with this covid ecmo is nowadays it's a very long run procedure lungs is taking almost 3 to 6 weeks to improve if the patients are put on ecmo for 3 weeks and they are kept on neuromuscular uh, uh, this uh, agents they are going to lose their muscles so how they will go uh, back to their normal life when they are off ecmo and obviously the bridge to transplant when they are waiting for the lung to come and you uh, you are actually waiting on ecmo so you, a patient has to be fit to get that transplant operation happen obviously cardiac ecmo we kept them uh, always awake for bridge to transplant like uh, uh, going for a heart transplant going for a uh, uh, this uh, assist devices and ecor which is another thing 
uh, the last presentation had some uh, renal thing. So it's a kind of ECOR we are using for a respiratory dialysis. The patients who are actually COPD, you don't want to ventilate, came to you with a 90 of uh, carbon dioxide and you have put them on extra corporeal carbon dioxide removal without ventilating them. And that lead to decrease of uh, carbon dioxide from 90 to 60 and make them awake and avoid intubation. So this is this, these are the places where we uh, practice this awake ECMO. So obviously we know a lot of uh, uh, advantages of the spontaneous breathing, like it's a more preferential uh, compliant part of the diaphragm which moves when we are awake. The tone of the respiratory muscles are good. You have a known diaphragmatic dysfunction. And obviously, uh, with a good venous return, you maintain very good cardiac output. So, VAP is also very less, ventilator associated with pneumonia. So, always keep them on the spontaneous breathing. And obviously, what you monitor, keeping them spontaneous is not your goal, but keeping them spontaneous and patients are doing well, they are calm, they are, they are not tachypneic, that is also an important. Patient breathing, you are keeping them having a patient breathing in 100 uh, uh, respiratory rate per minute, that is not your goal. Because that will that will induce a uh, this uh, uh, spontaneous lung injury. So you have to monitor what is his respiratory rate. Is it dyspneic even on ECMO? Is a rapid shallow breathing? Is uh, shallow breathing? Is there or any paradoxical have abdominal paradox? Is there or not? And you can see some esophageal pressure swings also. If it is less than uh, more than fifteen, you can go back to your sedation thing because your lungs are not ready to get them awake. So with this. If you see uh, uh, this kind of patients when they are uh, the, uh, showing tongue and everything, but not very much getting awake and all this, initially it happens. Initially they become hallucinated when they are coming out of uh, uh, the sedation things. So you have to wait uh, for them to get awake because they are ill, their lungs are not doing well and they are put on ECMO to rest, to keep them on the rest. So this is most important. Caution, they have to be fully awake. Now another caution, like uh, tachypneic. This ventilator is showing a respiratory rate of 51 and you have kept the patient on ECMO. So this is not your goal. If the patient is dyspneic, even after putting on ECMO, and you just look at the breathing, it's a paradoxical, small paradoxical breathing is happening, even on ECMO, that doesn't want you uh, want so you have to keep them sedated so you need to know when the patient we should practice an awake ECMO if they are fine if they are adequately awake and they are not tachypneic so obviously you have to assess the readiness and you can extubate even on ECMO that I'm showing you and you can do a lot of physiotherapies like uh, if you have a neck and trunk control you can push them on the edge of the bed even on ECMO close kinetic exercises, stand with support like this. And obviously you, you can mobilize them on ECMO and obviously keep in mind that they can be go on hemodynamic instability on ECMO or he can go for a desaturation, he can fall also. So obviously these things you have to anticipate and act accordingly. You have you can go back to the bed, you can fix before the cannulas and uh, this thing. Uh, I'll show you the pictures and you can check your machine before making them mobilize. But a few papers have been where, where we practice uh, ECMO, like in acute heart failure, where the patients are waiting for their heart or lung to come for the waiting for the transplant, because you have to keep them uh, very fit and uh, you have to keep them good nutrition diet on ECMO. And uh, awake extracorporeal memory not even on immunocompromised patients. You want to, uh, uh, you want to Exclude the extra intubation. <laughs> and the patients waiting for the lung transplant, they also should be awake because you don't know where you get the organ, when you get the organ. It can be one month, it can be two months, you are put on ECMO and you can mobilize, you can uh, uh, you can eat, you can talk to your family even on ECMO when they are awake. So when awake uh, ECMO is practiced, waiting for the lung transplant, this is another indication for this. And what we are talking about, this awake ECOR, this is known as respiratory dialysis. What I was telling, this is a near fatal asthma attack or a COPD exacerbations where the patients are getting at least two to three times 
uh, admissions in a uh, year and you don't want to intubate because they are very uh, resistant patients to take out of the ventilator uh, and what you what you can do if your co2 is more than uh, 70 co2 is 75 85 or 90 you can put some kind of extracorporeal uh, co2 removal without intubating them and keeping that CO2 level less than 60, they become awake and they can perform. You can avoid some intubation. This is known as the respiratory dialysis, taking out the carbon dioxide extracorporeally without intubating them. So this is another ECMO practice you can do in COPD patients. So obviously with that ambulatory things, what, what we do actually, that's why I'm showing you in our unit, what we do, we can orally feed them on ECMO. She is a dentist who was with us for 48 days on ECMO. And she's on ECMO, you can see the cannulas over here. And uh, sister more. is actually feeding. Sister is actually feeding her. So she was with us for 48 days and she went home after that. So look at the patient is looking very calm. Her lungs is not working. The oxygenation has been taken care of by your uh, ECMO and you are actually feeding the patient. So this is the effect of your awake ECMO, which is uh, going to help this patient. Now, what else you can do? You can do the physiotherapy exercises. If you see this patient, what he is doing here, he is on ECMO and he is doing physiotherapy, he is doing spirometry. He is doing spirometry on ECMO. So we are preparing the lungs to come out of ECMO, even he's awake and he's doing spirometry. So keeping them awake on ECMO is mandatory to get that lung uh, uh, prepared for when they are coming out. Next is the mobilization. If you see, he's another doctor of a colleague who went on uh, ECMO because of COVID. And unfortunately before the vaccine, happened and we uh, on ECMO he is look at the cannulas over here and we are mobilizing at the edge of the bed and we are making him uh, prepared for when he is going to come out uh, there should not be any neuromuscular weakness so you need two three people with the securing cannulas you can make them sit like this and they are actually going for a neuromuscular good neuromuscular recovery Look at the lady I was telling, they have been uh, taken on uh, age of the bed and uh, she's uh, sitting at the, uh, in a chair on ECMO. So this kind of mobilizations, when the, her lungs is not working or lungs is about to come out of ECMO, this is most important. And uh, another patient where, uh, where we shifted to a chair with the, on ECMO and uh, the physiotherapist is doing uh, uh, the physiotherapy exercises to keep that neuromuscular recovery because uh, it's a temporary disease in suffering form. And when they come out, they actually have a no neuromuscular problems. So physiotherapy on ECMO, you can do on awake patients even. See, look at the thing uh, when this uh, lady went home and she after just after 15 days, she was with ECMO 48 days with us. That is the uh, probably the longest ECMO in India and without transplant, she survived and uh, she sent me this picture after 15 days and look at the practice of awake ECMO make her with uh, left without any neuromuscular weakness. She can uh, uh, work on her own. For, remember, she was with us for two months out of that 48 days was on ECMO. So you need a team to perform that. Thank you, sir.